Welcome to the Wellington Eye Clinic. The Wellington Eye Clinic is located in South Dublin, Ireland. The Wellington Eye Clinic was one of the first private eye clinics in Europe to purchase an eczema laser. In 1999, we got our first Wavelight Allegretto. And I believe this was the third Allegretto ever manufactured. In 2001, we started using the Allegretto exclusively. The clinic is situated on the Beacon Medical Campus, which includes a full-service hospital with all the specialties and including cancer care. My name is Arthur Cummings and I've been doing refractive surgery since 1994. Being a member of the Betasite group at Wavelight has allowed me to be part of all the innovations that Wavelight have brought to the market over the years, including the Wavefront Optimized Profile, the Wavefront Guided Profile, Topography Guided Treatments and Custom Q. I'm going to share with you today my approach to topography guided treatments. Most of our patients coming through our doors want to improve their vision and see well with our glasses. For 85% of these patients we use the Wavefront Optimize profile and this is designed to improve vision with having a minimal effect on the higher order aberrations. On occasion however patients come in and despite their best correction still have visual quality issues this is where custom treatments come in. Now, as you know, the Wavelight Allegretto has the widest range of custom treatments available, and we now use a decision tree which helps us to decide which treatment to use when and for who. If there are no visual quality issues and the patient comfortably corrects the 6 over 6, and we do not want to induce any spherical aberration as with advanced monovision, then we simply do wavefront optimized corrections. If we want to correct spherical aberrations or induce spherical aberration, then we do custom Q. If there are visual quality issues present, then we have to evaluate the wavefronts by doing aberrometry. If these wavefront maps are valid and reproducible, then we go on and do wavefront guided treatments. If the wavefront maps are not valid and reproducible, then we go on to do topography guided treatments. I start thinking about doing customized treatments when I cannot correct the patient to 6 over 6 with best correction, when the patient tells me they have visual quality issues, or if they've had previous surgery and aren't totally satisfied with the quality of vision. I'm now going to demonstrate to you how we measure quality issues. Right, Ed, I'm now going to project for you a white dot on the chart. Are the edges well defined? Are there any halos around the dot? Is it a well-described dot? There's some streaks coming from the left of the dot. And if I now project for you that big white square, are the edges well-defined or any of them fuzzy? Well-defined. Well-defined. When Ed was looking at that white dot, he didn't see it perfectly. He saw a white streak coming from the dot. So we're now thinking there are visual quality issues and we want to do a customized treatment. As per our decision tree, we first want to do a wavefront guided procedure. So if we can get good validated wavefront maps, we'll go ahead and do a wavefront guided procedure. On this retinal image of the wavefront raw data, one can see that the raw data is poor and therefore the maps cannot be validated, irrespective of how good the color maps may appear. Yet the raw data is far more reliable and the maps based on this raw data can be trusted. The software has also given this raw data the all clear. When comparing four maps loaded simultaneously, we can do the final validation. If the four maps look very similar, then we can assume that the data is real and repeatable, and in this case we can proceed with a wavefront guided procedure. For the sake of illustration, we're going to assume that the wavefront maps could not be validated. That means we're now looking at doing a topography guided procedure. We now have to choose between the two topo platforms. We typically choose the data set that has more valid data, but if both have excellent data, like is frequently the case, then we typically choose the topolizer for more peripheral corner irregularities and the oculizer for more central irregularities. Topo guided is primarily designed to improve the corneal shape and topography. It can be done by correcting the topography first and then fine tuning the refraction later as a second procedure. Alternatively, it can be done as a one-step procedure by trying to predict what the refractive effect the topography correcting procedure is going to have and then using this information to amend the refraction used for the treatment. 
On the upper right of this topography map, we can see that the power of the cornea does not correspond well with the pupil position. The upper left image shows an angle kappa, as well as rings that have been well detected by the software. The analyzed area is 62% and the corneal profile on the lower left depicts irregular astigmatism. Doing a topography guided procedure here should definitely improve the quality of vision. On this oculizer map, the upper left image shows that the software has detected the corneal borders accurately and hence the data is valid. The upper right area confirms that this is good quality data. Loading four maps simultaneously and paging through different parameters like the sagittal front curve of the cornea, the tangential front curve of the cornea, the anterior elevation of the cornea, and the corneal pachymetry and seeing how similar the four images look on each occasion serves as further validation that the data is good and these maps can be used to drive a topo guided treatment. I'm now going to show you how we calculate the ablation profile on the portal software. The upper left image shows the higher order ablation profile based on topography data. The refraction has been modified to zero and hence this ablation profile is what is going to treat the visual quality issues that the patient is experiencing. The image on the right is based on oculizer data and the image below is based on wavefront data. One can see how similar these high order ablation profiles are and in this particular case it doesn't matter which profile is used as they are all going to have a very positive outcome. This example shows the high order ablation profile based on topography and once again the refraction is entered as plano in order to study the higher order ablation profile. One can see the ablation is designed to enlarge the optical zone. One can also note that the ablation has a hyperopic pattern to it and this is going to make the patient more myopic. We need to determine what the refractive effect is going to be in order to compensate for this by modifying the refractive data input on the laser. The software suggests that the effect is going to be around minus 0.29 while the ablation profile itself differs by 8 microns from center of ablation to periphery of ablation. This equates to approximately half a diopter. Doing TNT or topography neutralization technique as described by Lynn, one can see that minus 025 seems to be the correct amount needed to neutralize the effect of the higher order ablation profile. This minus 025 now needs to be added to the refraction that is to be treated. This amounts to minus 1 and then per my nomogram I add another minus 025 when treating corrections under minus 2 and so my final refraction to be treated is minus 125 and this should result in both an excellent refractive outcome as well as an improvement in visual quality. Finally I would like to introduce the Wavelight Biograph, a new device that has made ray tracing profiles possible. This device utilizes the combination of optical low coherence reflectometry and 820 nanometer superluminescent diode technology to give accurate and repeatable biometry measurements. Here one can see how the biograph measures central corneal thickness, AC depth, lens thickness, retinal thickness and axial length and how repeatable the measurements are. The pachymetry measurements have a standard deviation of less than one micron. The axial length measurements correlate very well with those of the RL master. This device is so accurate that we can measure RL thickness in vivo and by measuring the thickness of the RL can predict to within one diopter the RL power of an Acrosoft IQ lens with 90% confidence. The red arrow highlights the posterior capsule on this scan. Ray tracing profiles potentially provide the holy grail of ablation profiles. To date ablation profiles are calculated using the Goldstrand eye model that dates back to 1911. Today, with the incredible accuracy of the biograph, we can now determine exactly where each refractive interface is within the eye. The wavefront data is used for refraction, the topography is used for the anterior corneal surface, the oculizer supplies the data for the posterior corneal surface and the anterior lens surface, while the biograph gives the exact locations for anterior and posterior corneal surface, anterior and posterior lens surfaces, and finally the retinal surface thereby providing axial length. With all of the data available, an ablation profile can now be calculated using the patient's own personalized values and quality of vision and predictability should both improve. Three centers are involved in the clinical trial in Zurich, Cologne and Dublin 
and all are satisfied that this represents a further refinement in ablation profiles and refractive outcomes. Thank you for allowing me to share my approach to topography guided procedures with you and for your kind attention. Enjoy the rest of the evening.